Well, hello and welcome to episode 24 of the EnglishAnyone.com Power Learning Podcast. I apologize for the delay. It's been quite a while since I've released one of these and I really like to do these. I enjoy doing them, but sometimes I get really busy. I've been working on a lot of new things for the website, lots of new lessons, and we're also redesigning parts of the site as well. So unfortunately, I've just been a little too busy to work on these, but now for the new year I wanted to get back into doing this uh, especially while we're still working on other things but I really wanted to make time for uh, you know making these for you I really enjoy producing these podcasts and I hope they're helpful for you so for this uh, this first episode of the new year I'm really excited about this uh, I released a video about how I was building EnglishAnyone.com so talking more about the business side of what I do and I got quite a few comments from a lot of people that were listening and enjoying the uh, that video and I wanted to talk about the connection between business and language learning because both of these things are well they require a lot of time actually and it's not just something where you learn how to do a particular skill like how to jump rope uh, or even learning how to ride a bicycle which you know conceptually doesn't take that long after a little bit of practice but with learning a language or learning a business not only does it take a long time there are also many pieces that are involved with it so because there are so many parallels I want to talk about not only uh, being able to answer a lot of the questions or at least some of them in this podcast episode but I wanted to draw on some of the parallels or show some of the parallels some of the connections between what's happening in business and the way we approach business if we want to have success in business and the way we approach language learning as well now just to get started uh, a quick word about business and language learning in general now I have been you know teaching and I've been also doing various business things for a long time but I'm just one person with one person's perspective there are really a lot of different business models there are many different ways of building a business there are many different ways of learning a language as well I teach the way I teach because it's how I learned and how it was successful for me and as I've had more success in business I've been teaching the pieces of what I do to different people and hopefully this way will you know it will be another way for people to think about building businesses and it will be some more information for people to think about but I've come from uh, a lot of struggle in both of these areas not only learning business but also language learning so I think I have a, a little bit of authority at least when I'm talking about what's required if you want to be successful whether it's in business or in language learning so in this podcast episode we're just going to be going over a whole bunch of questions really uh, I've received as I mentioned before some questions from people specifically about business because I asked people if they had any and I know this was a while ago so I apologize for the delay but as they say better late than never this is a really great phrase for you out there better late than never so it means that even if you've taken a long time to do something it's better to do it late or deliver it late as opposed to not delivering it at all so better late than never anyway let's get started the first question comes from Mohammed and this is just asking about can we use phrasal verbs in business correspondence when we're doing business writing that kind of thing and business business wise when we're talking to people in English it's actually a bit more of a conversational language even in a business situation the only time maybe you wouldn't be using phrasal verbs and again phrasal verbs if you're not familiar are things like pick up put down pull over where we're combining two or three words together I've just released a new course about this that I'm testing with members and I'm really excited about it that's uh, beside the point right now but that's what a phrasal verb is and because these are a bit more conversational people often will use them more in conversations than you know in business and specifically business writing now you usually won't see these in something like uh, like legal writing where it's very professional and it has to be very very specific and one of the things about phrasal verbs is they can often be a little bit vague or you won't know specifically what it's talking about if I just say hey come over at two o'clock uh, and maybe I don't I mean I want you to come to my house but you know I'm using it that way but if I were to write something and I wanted it to be very professional I would say please arrive uh, or I want you to do something very very specific and that's why I wouldn't use a phrasal verb 
But in general, if you're just, you know, let's say working at an office and you want to send an email to somebody like a coworker, a phrasal verb is perfectly fine for that situation and it will help you sound much more natural. But again, I would you know, listen to what other people are saying and obviously pay attention to the way other people are writing to you. Look for phrasal verbs in the writing and if you don't see any, then that would be a cue to you. That would be an indication that it's probably best to not write them. But if you do see phrasal verbs and you hear them in the conversations, especially in business settings, then feel free to use them. All right, the next question is from Daphne, and this is actually two questions, and I'll go through each one individually. The first one is, is it important to have mentors when you start a business? And I would add, you know, is it important to have mentors when you're learning a language? And I would obviously say yes, it's very important to do that because we may, we may be born with certain instincts about how to breathe or drink or, you know, even babies. You could throw a baby in a pool and it will naturally turn itself over and uh, try to float and it will try to stay above water like that but we don't necessarily have an instinct for business because again business requires a lot of things that come together or a lot of different skills you have to learn a lot of different parts and pieces of knowledge that you have to combine and if you want to instead of making a whole bunch of mistakes yourself it's really helpful if you can find other people that have already done what you want to do so in my case you know, I'm living in a small town in Japan and it can be quite hard to physically meet people. I go out all the time and I ask, hey, are you having a business or do you do anything? And really in my town, it's kind of difficult to find people. But the real mentors that I've used are pretty much all from books and that's available to anybody. So the information that you can find on the internet, there's just so much available and it's really easy if you want to find things or you know, focus on specific ideas like you want to learn about accounting or marketing or other things like that. Begin with all of these specific books about these specific topics that you're interested in and that's what's going to help you learn more quickly. Anyway, so uh, a mentor, really what you're doing when you're finding a mentor is you're leapfrogging. This is the idea of jumping over something as opposed to making the mistakes yourself. You're benefiting from the mistakes that other people have made, the lessons that other people have made, so that you don't have to learn everything all over again. So use all the knowledge that's available, not only for people that are learning new languages, but also for learning in business. Now, in my case, when I thought about learning languages, I did what other people were doing. But if you see that maybe you're not making progress the way I wasn't making progress when I began learning Japanese, then it was something that I had to decide, okay, either I'm going to continue doing this or I'm going to have to figure out some different ways to do that. Now, uh, for me, in my case, I couldn't find anybody else that was doing what I wanted to do, so I had to start kind of building my own system. And that's why I built the system I did to teach myself Japanese. And now that's what I use to teach people English. But uh, if I would have found somebody else that had already developed the system I had, then that would have been much, much faster. I'm not trying to develop a system just to develop it. The only reason I would build anything like that, and that requires a lot of energy, whether you're building something new for a business or for learning language or anything else, it requires a lot of time and energy. So if you don't want to do that, it's much better to find other pieces of software or lessons or books or anything like that that can help you out. So unless you just enjoy learning everything by yourself and you don't mind taking the extra time, you can learn many valuable lessons this way. But with the value of a mentor, it's, in my opinion anyway, a much, much better thing to do. So if you can find a mentor or if you just have access to some books or information online, or even if you're watching this or listening on YouTube to this right now, you can just search whatever you're looking for. How do I market online? How do I learn accounting? and you can find tons of books and videos right here through YouTube. Her second question was how to automate. And this was also another question by way. So we have two people that are asking, how do we automate the systems that we have? Now, I'll just give you an example from my own business. I actually talked about this in a recent Power Learning uh, it was a newsletter I sent out not that long ago, uh, an email to people explaining how I've been building the systems that I have. Now, as a specific example, Master English Conversation, that's the program where I teach people how to speak conversational English in steps, and it takes a lot of 
work to, cre to create this each month. And so I have a lot of different pieces and, but each one of these things like a video or audio lesson, it's got its own pieces within it. So let's say I have an audio lesson that also requires a transcription. Now, anything that requires me to think about, this is the creative, how do I create the lesson? What kind of things should I write? That kind of thing. This is a bit more difficult to automate because it requires a lot of thought and you actually have to create something. But when you're beginning to look at the systems that you have and every system or everything you do has systems or pieces of it can be broken down or separated into system kind of pieces that can become systems I started thinking about well there are parts of what I do that don't really require a lot of you know creative thought even though they do require time so let's say a lesson like this so I'm, I'm right now I'm thinking about this I have to get questions from people and then I'm giving my answers to that now I can't give that to somebody else but I can give the transcript of this or the job of writing the transcript to somebody else because there's no real creative thought there all I have to do is once the recording is finished give it to somebody else and have them transcribe it I haven't yet bothered to do that with these lessons because I've been busy doing other things and well it's you know just something I apologize for I'll probably get to do that in the future but anyway just as an example that's what's happening here so the creative part of whatever it is you do and this is the value that you give to other people People. that's the real part of the business that uh, makes the most important thing that's the thing you should really be focusing on and it's the same way with learning a language now you can you know go through the steps of finding what lessons you should be using or you can go through the steps of designing your own lessons or if you know someone else that already creates lessons that are in a format or in a way that you would like to learn then just use those so anything that requires a lot of thinking and concentration, that's the actual language learning part, that's where you want to use all of your energy. But you can systematize everything else and slowly over time, uh, maybe in language learning it's a bit difficult because you can't really give that to somebody else, but pretty much every piece of a business, as long as you can systematize it, uh, can be given to other people. But the best way to begin doing this is to look for the tiniest possible parts that don't require any thought that you can give to others or that you can have a machine do. So as an example, I use an email service to send out emails for me. Now I don't want to go through and send out thousands of emails to people individually because that would take a really long time. Again, the actual sending of an email is not really a creative thing. It's just a process that a machine or a person could do. So I try to find a machine to do it for me, and that's exactly what I did. So what I do with EnglishAnyone.com is really use all of my energy on the creative part about how to make really good lessons for people. And it's the same thing for business. I spend a lot of time thinking about the marketing and how I can communicate what we do with EnglishAnyone.com and, you know, thinking about things like this like this podcast episode so again when you want to think about all of the things you do no matter what it is you do there will always be pieces that don't require much creative thought so begin with those and begin breaking those up and trying to give them to other people or to machines to complete for you now Daphne had one more question and this was about business writing so I want to talk a little bit very quickly about business writing and learning business English now there is a misconception uh, in the world about you know especially among language learners that there is a specific kind of business English that needs to be learned and really what you're learning for business English is how to sell and of course this doesn't mean you're physically selling you know a product or service but when you communicate with people you're trying to influence their behavior and so that's the kind of thing that you should be learning now there is a, a really interesting guy kind of a mentor of mine from over a hundred years ago and I don't really talk about him so much so I figured I would mention him here I recommend you look him up uh, and his name is Sherwin Cody now he developed his own language course he's kind of like the me from you know over a hundred years ago and he even developed a business course for people but what he talks about in that and he, what he tries to explain to people and again this is a this is an English speaker a native English speaker teaching other native English speakers about how to write for business 
Now what he explains to people is that there isn't a specific set of words or you know, knowledge that you really need to have in order to communicate for business, what you really need to do is recognize that it's a particular kind of writing you're using to influence people. And the best way to do that is to understand the people you're speaking with and then communicate to them in very just, you know, simple language. So let's say I talk to a friend of mine uh, and, you know, he wants uh, he wants something to eat. So I just listen to him and I'm trying to figure out what he's interested in. And he says he wants something to eat. So I talk with him a little bit more. What kind of food does he like? That kind of thing. Really, this is a, a kind of a business conversation, especially if I'm hoping to influence his behavior in some way. So let's say I sell pizzas and I've, you know, convinced him that, you know, the pizza is exactly the kind of thing that he wants. And I'm able to tell him that then I can influence his behavior and get him to purchase that. Now a lot of people think about this and they get the idea that there is a specific set of vocabulary that they need to use or they need to learn and this is something like data processor or copy machine or other things like that. But really what you need to do when you're trying to communicate in business writing is just being clear and expressing what it is you want. So when you think about business writing, what you really want to do is learn how to influence people by understanding their behavior and understanding what it is they want. I could contrast business English with, you know, maybe writing poetry or writing fiction novels or something like that. Now, in a fiction novel, I would, you know, write a great story about what's happening and I want to, you know, talk about the drama and explain the characters and all of these things and that will, that's what would get people interested in reading or listening to the story. But when I want to communicate with someone to actually influence their behavior, I want to be simple. I don't want to use a lot of complicated language and explain things because people really just have problems that they want to have them solved. So people, you know, they think about, well, I'm going to talk about, let's say I have a product and I want to describe all the great things about the product, where it was made and how we produce it. And this is great for, you know, getting a little bit of interest about the product, but ultimately people are just interested in how does it work and how is it going to help me? So I don't spend a lot of time talking about all these extra things. I just talk about if your problem is this, then we can help you with this product, that kind of thing. And so when you're thinking about learning business English, you know, actually focus more on sales more than anything else because it will, you know, give you the opportunity to understand and improve your listening. But then, you know, you'll actually get to know how to communicate with people because all you're really doing, ultimately, this is kind of the secret for business English. You're communicating back to people the things that they're saying to you. And this shows that you understand. Now, I want to express this again. I want to say this again because it's such an important thing. People think they need to come up with a lot of uh, really interesting ideas or they need to think up some great, great sales page or pitch or something like this. This is, uh, you know, a message that you want to use to communicate to someone you're trying to sell something to them. But really all you need to do is listen to what the people are asking for. And if you can deliver that, then tell them you can deliver that. And that's all you have to do. Now, this is the same way whether you're selling to someone outside of a company, like you're a business owner and you're selling something, or if you're trying to communicate with other people within your own company. The first thing you have to do is listen to them and actually really understand their situation and why they're experiencing that. And this is called empathy. And it's the feeling of understanding somebody else's situation and, you know, having a connection with them. And then assuming you can help them with your skills or your product or whatever, then just communicate back to them what they told you. So if a friend of mine says, hey, I have a headache, and I say, oh, if you have a headache, then this will probably be helpful for you. And I'm not trying to describe anything. It just says, hey, this is a, a really good product that would probably be helpful for you and give it a try. And so that's really what business English is all about. So if you're trying to study business English, don't think about a specific set of words that you need to learn. You know, this is all the same thing that a native speaker would be learning as well. So if you really want to communicate and be able to compete with native speakers, the thing that you should really be focusing on is the sales aspect of how you communicate with others. It's not necessarily the English. The English will come along as you do that. So try to learn both of them. If you can learn, you know, not just the a whole bunch of phrases and vocabulary that will help you in business again, like, you know, technology words or accounting words or something like that. Really focus on learning the sales aspect and how you actually communicate in a simple way with other people. And that will improve how you speak as well as how you write. 
Okay, the next question is from Baleen, and hopefully again I'm pronouncing this correctly. I've got learners all over the world, and well, we get a lot of names. You know, I think my name is pretty normal, but it sounds weird to other people. You never know. So anyway, uh, hopefully I pronounced that right. Baleen, maybe. Well, anyway, uh, so these are a couple of questions. We've got two. The first is, how do you meet more people, and do you need partners, you know, if you're learning a language or if you're going to build a business? So how do you meet more people? Now this is kind of two different questions. The first is if you want to meet more people at your level, it's pretty easy to do that. Like in my case, you know, I would just go to YouTube and I would find other people, just look for English language teachers on YouTube and I could connect with them. And you know, if I send them an email and I'm offering to help them in some way or I can you know, be of service, and that's basically how I connect with a lot of people and began building the network that I have of people now. So now I've got friends all over the world, other people that also teach languages, and you know, this is just one part of my life or what I do. So I've got friends in other ways that I connect with, you know, like some people could be from gardening or some people could be from sports or other things like that. So a way to connect with people at your level is to do that. Now, if you want to connect with people that are higher than you if you want to find mentors this is where you really need to focus on the other person and this is where those business English quote-unquote skills would come in handy now this means that let's say I you know I'm, I'm just starting out I don't have a business yet or um, you know maybe I'm a non-native speaker and I want to find a native speaker to practice with so this is a person above my level and really what that means is that I'm asking for their help so what I have to do is figure out how I can provide help to them now in a business situation, you can sometimes find people that are willing to trade services. I uh, actually, I was in uh, Washington DC recently on a vacation, just going back over New Year's, and I met a guy who was a, uh, he's a photographer, and he talked about how he would trade some of the things, so he would make pictures and put them in frames and he would frame them and then you know give them to other people in the neighborhood who also worked on their own businesses and he had told me about the pair of glasses he was wearing that he got for three different pictures he had so here he is you know he's he's bartering he's exchanging his skills for you know what he can receive in return so you can do that you can figure out how you can take what you have and how you can provide for other people uh, but really the best way to do that is to find a problem that somebody else is having and really explain to them why they're having that problem and what that is so let's say as an example someone came to me and they said hey Drew you know your website is awful and it is awful you know it's not that great of a website and that's why we're redesigning it at the moment but if someone came to me and said you know what you've got this and this and this and all of these other things are great but the website is really bad and this is not you know just like a generic email like hey would you like some help with your website you know those kind of emails get deleted really quickly because there's nothing specific about the person you're writing to if you want to communicate with someone and connect with people you can't just send out an you know a letter that shows no thought you have to actually take time to understand the other person and this goes it's the same thing talking about the business English writing when you take the time to understand other people that's when they begin to listen to you and that's how we work that's just empathy and that's how people interact with each other so if you want to connect with other people and you want to you know whether they're at your level or especially at a level above you because that's really the best kind of person to connect with because you can learn a lot more from them whether you're in business or learning a language then you really have to focus on the other person and not you know do what a lot of people do a lot of learners I get upset about this a lot of learners they just email people saying hey help me hey would you correct this grammar for me hey would you you know start speaking with me and you're not offering anything to the other person so it's the exact opposite of what you should be doing when you look for someone think about your skills and how you can help someone and that's how you begin the relationship so the other question is do you need a partner to begin a business I don't think you necessarily need a partner I think it's better to just start out and think about what your idea is and you know try to find other people to work with if you need that but you don't necessarily need a partner yet. but you know some people like having a partner some people don't it's you know not really a question that has a correct answer so it's just one of those things that 
make sure you find uh, a partner because that's what you think you'd really like to have, not because you know, you're know you struggling with one area of the business and you don't want to hire somebody else to do that kind of thing. So you know maybe try to learn a little bit about the different pieces of the business and then find other people to hire, just like I do, you know, to work on things that are better suited for them. So I, like me, I hate writing transcripts, so I give that job to somebody else. But it doesn't necessarily mean I need a partner for the business that's going to you know write transcripts for me. It's up to you. All right, the next question is from Pradeep, and this is asking, how do we figure out what business to start? And it's kind of the same thing with learning a language. How do you know where to begin, that kind of thing? Now, these are connected, but a little bit different, so I'll address them individually. The first one about business, uh, and this is a misconception, a kind of backwards idea that a lot of people have, and one that I certainly had when I began building business, uh, many years ago and this is that you need to have an idea in order to start a business so a lot of people think okay I'm going to sit around and until I come up with a really good idea so this is me individually having to think of something and then I try to build that thing and then go out and try to sell that thing this is the backwards way of building a business what you should really be doing especially if you don't know what to do is just listen train your mind to stop you know using your own ideas because really the the thing you want to get good at doing as a business owner uh, or somebody even you know let's say you're an executive in a company is how do you listen to customers and then help them with their problems you don't necessarily need to give them what they're asking for but you need to listen to them and figure out what's a good way to solve that problem and that's the skill you develop as an entrepreneur so in my case, I may not be, you know, I think I make some pretty good videos, but I know there's some other people that can do actual video editing better than I can. So I'm looking for people that can do that for me and, you know, looking for other pieces of the business as well, like software and other things as we grow. So when you're thinking about doing those things, always listen first. And that's where you should really begin, especially if you have no idea what you want to do at all. Now, whether you have an idea or not, again, listening is the key listen to people that's the skill you should be focusing on and be in the business of helping people over time you'll find that you're more interested in doing certain things than others and those will probably be the things you get into building a business with uh, in the future as far as language learning goes you really want to start with the basics you don't want to be learning all of these different things before you focused on mastering the basic skills that you have and then over time you can let your interests you know just like my Japanese interest was or my interest in improving my Japanese came from wanting to learn more about gardening and that's how I learned a lot about the language because you can learn a specific grammar point in many different ways and you can practice speaking in many different situations or many different contexts so in my situation I can talk about prepositions like one rock being on top of another rock or I can be an architect and talk about one you know building or one floor being on top of another floor so use the interests that you have once you've built a foundation from the basics and that's how you can begin going out and learning a lot more and learning a lot more more quickly all right i don't want to keep you too long in this podcast episode so we'll have one final question this is from doug and he actually had about 20 different questions all about marketing how do you do sales how do you do payment processing how do you do all of these other things when you're starting a business and now this is something i want to i want to talk with yeah, I want to talk with you about this briefly and it's the same thing for language learning because again 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 it's a thing that requires a lot of time and also has a lot of intricate pieces that are interconnected so listen carefully now when I first began you know thinking about not only learning languages but learning business you know there's so many different pieces that you have to think about and you have to decide what am I going to work on where is my focus what should I be doing and now when I think about it if I were to start it all over again especially with business I would begin as I mentioned earlier with just listening now if you think about the whole world as kind of like a jungle and you've got all of these different species in that you know all these different kinds of animals these are like different kinds of businesses and each one of them is trying to compete and each one is telling you that you need to do a specific thing with business so especially if you're starting out and you have no idea what you're doing then you know it becomes really easy for you to listen to you know the people that are marketing because you know they they're really good at selling and they're really good at communicating so that's why the people that know how to market very well they know how to sell they make quite a bit of money 
But then you've got other people that, you know, they're selling systems or they're selling copywriting services or they're selling, you know, all of these other things that are required for building a business. But if you really think about what a business is, it's just serving a customer. Now that could be a client or it could be a system that you build. You know, you could be uh, someone that sells ice cream or English lessons or anything else. So when you're beginning with either learning a business or learning a language, you want to begin building, you know, the, the skills that you need for either of these things. You really want to start with the basics. And when I, you know, let's say I was just to create a business right now, I would go out and just listen. I would actually go out and just listen to people because I know that my value as an entrepreneur, as a person that can build a business is not necessarily in doing the actual work. This is important, but again, the highest value an entrepreneur can have is actually leading the creation of a, of a business, the creation of systems that can solve problems. So a lot of people, they decide that, well, I can't, you know, I can't get into software or I can't get into, you know, agriculture or pharmaceuticals or something like that because I don't personally know anything about these subjects. Now, it is important to learn a lot about these things and you can do that over time. But if you see a problem in an area that nobody else is really solving well, even if you don't know how to solve that yourself, your job becomes how do I listen to the person's problem and really understand the problem and then figure out a solution for that. So you actually design those things with customers and then over time you begin to build on this you know you learn you know okay the, the customer is having these problems and so that would that would inform my ability to write copy actually to write like a sales letter for something like that and uh, you know as I do that I'm able to get a few more customers and then I talk with them and I, I can make a better website I can do all these other things and slowly over time I'm building the systems one on top of the other but I begin with the basics just getting one customer who's actually going to pay for something so before you worry about a website or you know like a business you know information like filing for actually creating a company or all of these other things Remember that not every business needs a website. Not every business needs to have, you know, a great name. You know, a lot of people, you can begin without a name, without a website, just by listening to people. And that's what you should be focusing on. Now, it's the same thing with language learning. You know, there are going to be all kinds of people, like myself included, you know, that sell lessons or to sell other, other things like that to help you improve. And a lot of it's great. Maybe some of it isn't. It depends. You know, you just have to look and try things for yourself and see what happens. But you know in my case i'm not trying to sell what i make to everybody my my lessons are not for everybody i have a very specific group uh, a very specific kind of person i'm interested in helping this is a person that's highly motivated to learn and they really want to have a great program that's already designed for them so that they can just focus on mastering that and then within that i'm looking for people that are maybe uh, kind of intermediate to upper level people that they understand a lot of English like you know maybe someone like you that's listening to this podcast episode right now but they just can't speak confidently so those are the specific group of people I'm looking for so when I communicate with these kind of people it's because I've learned a lot from working with and talking with this group of people about what their problems are that's why I don't talk to people about hey I've got lessons for beginners or I've got all these other things over here I'm looking for a specific kind of person Person. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to have all these extra people that, you know, either aren't ready for my programs or, you know, they're just not ready to learn or they're not that motivated, that kind of thing. So when you think about building a business or you think about language learning, always begin with the basics. Focus on the individual things at the most basic level, like the basic grammar that appears in any conversation. And then you can start learning more about individual topics and things like that that would help you learn. So with business, try to, especially if you're at the very beginning, ignore everything and just listen to the people around you because there are thousands of problems that are not being solved and there's new problems being created all the time and that's the amazing thing about business a lot of people think well there's not enough money or there's not enough time or there aren't you know there are all these other things like i'm telling you if you have the opposite way of looking at the world you will see things in a completely new way there are problems everywhere especially that people are willing to pay for
and the people that are good at making money are always trying to find ways to get rid of their money so that they can save themselves more time. So, you know, especially like people that are successful entrepreneurs, they don't want money. They want more time. They want to be able to create ideas and then, you know, give projects for other people to manage. And it's the same thing I'm doing. So I don't necessarily want a whole bunch of money. I want to create some great systems and then also enable other people to make money while, you know, helping me build these things. And you can do the same thing. So don't worry about what you have to do in the website and how you do all these things. Just listen to people. That's all you have to do. And, you know, I can go into this more if you have, you know, questions or if you have specific uh, concerns about this. I've often thought about, you know, writing a book about this. Maybe I'll produce that in the future if there's enough demand for this specific idea of kind of what order to do things in. But always begin with the basics and just try to ignore everything else. I know you see people like, wow, that guy has a whole bunch of money and he has a, a helicopter and a, and a big house or something. I should listen to him. But ignore that guy. You want to listen to the people around you. And then, you know, as you start learning and you develop a good business idea from the people around you, uh, then the people around you will tell you if they're willing to pay for that thing. And then you can think about a website and all these other things that are required. But keep it simple, whether you're starting a business or whether you're learning a language. And I look forward to seeing you in the next podcast episode. Bye-bye.